Hi, welcome to Real Sales 101, the no-nonsense approach to selling. Over my years of dealing with salespeople, and I've dealt with many of them, people have come to see me, I've hired people, I've worked with people, I've had to fire people, unfortunately, but over the years of working with salespeople, there is, I'm not going to say it's a common theme, but it's a big enough theme in order to make a video about this, okay? It's a big enough theme, and that is many of them don't understand sales. Well, they come in and they talk or they present their products and they do that kind of thing, but they don't understand the sales. And I know because as, as I'm working through the sales process with them, they somehow falter. They somehow just don't get it. Okay. So when I ask people, so then I take it to asking people and I say, like, do you understand sales? And I says, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I, you know, I understand sales. I know exactly what it is that sales is. And I say, okay, well, what is it? And everyone gives me the same answer. The, the answer they give is, well, I have a product uh, here. I have a product and um, I want to sell it. So I go to you and I say, okay, you know, do you want to buy my product? And I'm trying to sell you the product. And yes, that's what sales is on a very simplistic level. But there's a lot more to it than that. And think if you can about a ball game, um, a baseball game, a sporting game. And from the outsider, the person who doesn't understand and doesn't know, let's take baseball. He thinks the game is, well, he doesn't think, he knows the game is you throw the ball, you hit the ball, and you run over to your base. Okay, fine. You try and tag the guy out. Okay, fine. It's simple enough. But to the guy who knows the game, to the guy who's, who's, who, who's on the field, the guy who's getting paid to play the game, or the, just the guy who understands the game, even from the stands, he knows that there's more to it than that. There's more intricacies. There's subtleties. There's, it's not just the pitcher throwing a ball and the guy hits the ball. Does the pitcher throw left hand or right hand? Is he going to throw a knuckleball or a slider or a curveball or a fastball? Does the batter bat right hand or left hand? Okay. Does he run fast? Does he run slow? Does he tend to bat towards the left? Does he tend to bat towards the right? And all these things change the narrative of the game. They all change the narrative. And it's the same thing with sales. It's not just Oh yeah, I have a product and I go over and I tell them my product. This is where people fall short because they think that's all it is. And sales is actually, there's a lot of depth to sales. There's a lot of stuff going on if you want to do it successfully. Of course, you can just go and say, hey, I have a widget. I have a product. I have a service. I'd like you here to buy my service. And the guy says yes or he says no. And you shrug your shoulders and you walk away. Either you got a sale or you didn't get a sale. Unfortunately, that's how most of the business is done. And it's fine if you're content at that level. It's fine if you're working for a big company and they're not paying too much attention to you and you're making your numbers and everything's fine. But it's not fine if you want to go up a level. It's not fine if you really want to understand and become good at what you do and become successful at what you do. It's fine if you want to stay mediocre because that's it. For a guy watching the ball game from the outside, he looks and he sees it and he says, okay, you throw the ball, you hit the ball, fine, let's go home, let's order a hot dog and let's go home. But to the guy who understands the game, there's statistics, there's all kinds of things going on. And sales doesn't work by statistics in that sense, but it does have its own subtleties. It does have its own thing. Because otherwise, we're just, if you're just going to bump into things and hope that the person buys from you, you're never going to get anywhere. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. So you have to understand sales. It's very important before you get into a sales career, before you work, before you go, you have to know the parameters because sales has the parameters. It has parameters. There is a sales structure. And the more you follow that structure, the more you understand that structure and know that structure before you go into the sale, the better off you're going to be because you're not going to jump ahead to something. You're not going to go from A and jump to Z or Z. You're not going to do that. You're going to go A to B to C to D until you get all the way to the end. That's the way to do it. If you jump ahead, you're going to leave something out behind. Okay. And it's very, very rare. You're going to walk into someone and the guy's going to say, oh, sure, I'm going to buy from you. So you have to understand the sales structure. Okay. You have to understand that in sales, there's a process in selling. There's sales steps. Okay. There's sales steps. I, I, sales is... To put it this way, it's one step short of a science if you do it properly. Okay? It is 
there is a lot going on. There's a lot of subtleties. There's a lot of body language you have to read. There's words you have to hear the customers say. You have to check the comforts, uh, 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 you know, the comfort level, you know, uh, um, you know, of your customer. Now, I'm not saying you're going to know all that right away, okay? But these are things and feelings that you get over time. But before you get to that point later on, right now, what you want to do is you just have to understand that the most basic part of sales is that you are a seller and the other guy is a buyer, whoever it may be, whatever it is you're selling. It, it doesn't matter what you're selling. You hear me say that all the time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it's true. It doesn't matter. Whether you're selling plastic bags or you're selling mattresses, doesn't matter. Whether you're selling haircuts, like I said, or you're a Vermont florist, doesn't really matter. Okay. So you're the seller. He's the buyer. Now, we all know what it's like to be the buyer because we buy things every day. We buy clothes, we buy food, we buy cars, we buy mattresses, we buy plastic bags, we buy all kinds of stuff. We get our haircuts and everything. We know what it is. We walk in and we, we, we check pricing, we check quality, we check service, we check all that stuff. Some things we buy on a whim, some things we invest a lot of you know, research on. So this is, this is what we know. We know, we understand being a buyer. Okay. Now there's two types of buyers out there. Okay. There's a buyer who's getting paid to be a buyer. Someone's working for a company. Okay. And he's being paid to purchase things for that company, right? He's got to buy the nuts and bolts and pencils and pens and everything for that company. So he's being paid to be a buyer. And there's the other kind of buyer who's not being paid, which is us as a buyer. We go into a food store. We're not being paid to buy food. No one's paying us to buy our food. No one's paying us to buy our clothes or to buy our car. No one, right? So there's two kinds of buyers. And depending on what you do, you're dealing either with the public as buyers, as people who are not being paid, or you're dealing in private, which means a person is being paid, okay? So the first thing is you have to understand that and know where you're coming from. So there is a relationship there. The buyer knows what he has to do. The buyer knows what he's looking for. Okay. And the seller, you in this case, have to play that role to what he is. You're not there to reinvent things. This has all been done before for, for decades and, and centuries and millennia beforehand. Sales is not new. You just have to follow the steps and you have to have an understanding of it. And the understanding is it's almost like a dance. Okay, not a dance where people just blah, blah, blah all over the place. Not that kind of dance. A dance where you have two people and one is leading and one is following. And one is making the moves to this way and then making the moves to that way. So that's what it is. It really is a dance. So you go in and the buyer understands why you're there. You want to sell them something. You want to make money. You want to grow. You want to get the order. You want to make profit. He understands, okay? But you have to understand him. That's really important. You have to understand the buyer and what he wants, okay? Now, when you go in, there's different kinds of buying and selling, and there's different reasons why the guy buys, right? If you walk into a chocolate shop, if you walk into a chocolate shop, your purchases are based on the, 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 the you know, the buyer. You're walking into a chocolate shop, right? You're the buyer. When you walk into a chocolate, you're, you're very... um. Uh, it's because you have, uh, you know, you're in the mood for some chocolate. You want to buy a gift for someone. Maybe you want to get something for your kids because they are in the mood. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. It's, and, and, you know, your purchase is, I don't know, it's relatively small. It's not a big purchase. Okay. And when you go to buy a house, that's a different story or a car. It's a different story. It's a bigger purchase. It's long lasting. You want to know if you get comfort from it. You want to know if it's going to, uh, uh, you know, help your family grow in there. Uh, you know, these are, these are different purchases, right? The concepts of selling the home and selling the chocolate are the same, but the guy selling the house, if he's going to sell you on a quick fix for your sweet tooth, he's not going to make a sale on the house. And the guy selling you the chocolate, if he's selling you on a lifetime investment, a long-term lifetime investment of comfort, it's not going to sell any chocolate. So you really have to understand the buyer. And then by understanding the buyer and knowing what the buyer is and what he thinks and what he wants, what the buyer wants, now you know what to give him. Okay. And like I say, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. There's many steps involved. 
Okay, the step of contacting the customer, the step of reaching out to him, the step of finding out his needs. I mean, there's all kinds of steps in there. The steps of closing the sale, right? <clears throat> Again, when it comes to the guy closing the sale, which is the most important part, all right, when it comes to the guy doing that, the house seller is not going to close the sale by saying, oh, wouldn't this be a great gift to buy, <laughs> to buy somebody? Okay, I mean, yeah, you know, there are some guys out there who say, oh, yeah, I got lots of money and I want to buy somebody a gift of a home. Fair enough. But that's not very, that's not very common. That's not very often. So he's not going to close the sale by saying this house makes a great gift. Okay, and the chocolate guy is not going to close the sale saying, you know, this, you know, this chocolate makes a great long term investment. It doesn't. Chocolate lasts you 15 minutes and then it's all done. That's it. So you have to know how to reach your clientele, depending on who it is and what it is you're after. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you're a sales guy on the top or a sales guy on the bottom. If you're a sales guy selling aircraft, you have to know how to reach your guy who's interested in buying aircraft. He's not interested in the house tactics nor the chocolate tactics. He want to know how fast that things goes. He wants to know the fuel level, how many people it carries. He wants to know how often before it needs repairs, right? These are things that he wants to know. So you have to understand that. It sounds silly, but I've dealt with too many salespeople who come in and they just don't get it. They don't understand. They talk to me about something that I'm not interested in. They talk to me about something that means nothing to me. And that's a very, very big mistake on their part because they start losing points. They start losing points. It was like me at the beginning. I didn't know what I was talking about. The guy threw me out of his office. That's what it is. Go back when you know what you're talking about. Come back and see me. And then you see, is what you're offering really for that person? So you really have to know what you're offering. Okay. And then you have to know what the buyer wants. And then you know what kind of buyer you're going to connect with. Okay. Then you're going to know who you're going to connect with. Okay. Because sales has its steps. It has its steps and it has its science and it has its reasoning the same way sports does the same way does the pitcher throw left-handed or right-handed for an outsider it means nothing but for the guy interested in the game for the team owner for the team player it's everything is he left-handed or is he right-handed that's the different that's what makes or breaks the game the subtleties the nuances that you have to pick up on it's not just going and throwing a ball you're not just kids on a field anymore you're not that this is a very, very serious thing. Okay. So you, you have to, when, when you go out and when you, when you do this, okay, you have to know what it is you're doing. Okay. And from there, what you're going to do is you have to know your strengths. You have to know what you're offering and you have to know what the other guy wants. And that's what you're going to play on. Okay. That's what you're going to play on. You're not just a slug that walks around and bumps into someone and Hey, he buys what's in your pocket. It doesn't work that way. Okay. And you can't just like playing with kids on a field, throw the ball anywhere. That's not going to work either. So you must get that frame of mind. You have to know where it is. Okay. So sales has a structure. Okay. And, and <clears throat> you have to know your goals in that structure. What is it you really want from the guy? When you know that it allows you to take the steps into that direction. Okay. And, you also have to know, aside from the selling, okay, you have to know why you're there, okay? Not just what you have, but why you're there. You figured out why the buyer is there, allegedly, okay? You figured out why the buyer is there, because that's what you have to do. What does the buyer want? Why is he there, okay? But why are you there? And this is important, and I'll tell you why. Because you walk in, if you walk in with the wrong attitude, if you walk in with the wrong frame of mind, you're done also. You'll still make a sale, but you won't make as many sales. Okay. Keep in mind, you can be very, very successful, but you can always be more successful. You can always get one more. There's always something else you could have grasped. And that's important to know. It's very important to know. Okay. Here's an, here's some, some reasons, some examples. Okay. You're not there for your ego. Okay. And in sales, it's very easy. The guy shows you up. The guy doesn't want to talk to you. All of a sudden, your ego is hurt. I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. Okay. You're not there for anger reasons. 
Okay? You're not there because you're angry. You want to take it out of him. You don't like the way the guy treated you and you hate him. And you want to go after him. You're not there for that. Okay? You're not there for revenge. Okay? You lost an order and you want to go back and get the guy. There's people who do this. There's people who live by this. They can be very successful, but they're doing it right. Keep in mind something. They're doing it right if they're successful. Okay? But a lot of people just come in with the anger or the revenge or the ego. Ego is a biggie. We all have got an ego. We all have a self-esteem and we all have an ego. And you go in, you get doors slammed in your face. Not three doors, 30 doors. You start getting angry. I want to get this guy. I want to get him. I want to get him. Some people take it the right way and they figure strategies and they go after the customer. Okay? But a lot of people don't. And a lot of people, I know people that carry grudges for years and years and years against their competitor. Competitor's a biggie, right? The competitor comes and he takes business away from you. He's some rich guy. He's some rich guy. His father left him a lot of money. Daddy left him a lot of money and it's great for him, right? And he can go and he can undercut you and he can take all your business away. He can start taking your clients away. If you don't have the same deep pockets he has, you're not going to win. Don't chase him at his game. Find your strengths. Find what it is you have to do. Don't chase him at his game. Don't chase your competitor at his game. Make it on your game. You have to know and you have to go with the right frame of mind. And when you get angry, it's like anything else. You see it all the time in movies or whatever. You know, the guy gets really angry and he starts to screw up in like fight movies or whatever. You don't get angry. You get smart. You get smart and you figure out how to do it, how to get your customers back, how to steal customers from the other guy, how to do what you have to do to become successful. Because if you go chasing your ego, you can chase it into a rabbit hole that you're not going to get out of. It's just going to harm you. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. The ego is there. I get it. Put it in check. It's not why you're there. You're there to make the sale. That's why you're there. You're there to grow your career. You're there to make money. You're there to, to, to make your numbers. Whatever it is you have to do, you're there to get business. You're not there to chase the guy who's got more than you, deeper pockets than you, and he can always undercut you. Because you do that, you're out. It's a very, very serious thing, and a lot of people do. And know why you're there. Have a purpose why you're there. Have a purpose. You, you, you're not there to prove a point, okay? You, that, that, that's not why you're there. You're there to sell the guy your product or service. You're there to get him on your side, to make him your friend, to bring him over to your side, to get him as a customer, a lifelong customer, a one-time customer, depending on what it is you're selling, right? Some purchases are one-time, some purchases happen every month. It really depends what you're selling, okay? That's what you want to do. Don't chase the other guy. Know your strengths and work that up. That's really, really important, okay? Because otherwise, you're, you're, you're going to be out. You're going to be out and you have to know what your strengths are and you have to go in with purpose. You have to go in with a goal. Go in knowing what you want. Go in ready to tackle that guy. Go in with a plan. This is important. So you have to get all that. So you understand the sales structure, understand the sales process, which we're going to go through. And this is an understanding of sales, knowing why you're there, knowing why he's there. Okay, and knowing what you have to do to get the guy. All right, you don't just go over and say, oh, Hi, I want to buy. Yeah, sure, some people will buy from you. Some will buy from you. Everyone's not going to buy from you. Now, everyone is not always going to buy from you. But when you have an understanding, you know how to play the game. Okay, you don't get offended. You don't, uh, 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 it's nothing personal. Like they say, it's just business, nothing personal. These are people who know how to play the game, they understand it. And that's what you have to learn, really important. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself out in the cold very, very quickly. Not successful, mediocre at best. It's just the way it works, you know? So that's, that's, that's it for now, okay? And um, soon enough, we'll be making a new video, okay? So I hope you guys join for that, okay? Um, so basically, just a summation, know the type of sale you're in, know the type of customer, Know why you're there, and that's it. And that you start grasping a full understanding of the sales. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, ask any questions if you like. And, uh, and that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.